Hey, one of the most popular guys out there on the tour. Everybody loves seeing this guy on TV. Big hand, Gerald Swindle. Give him up here. Which one sounds better, this one? Too low. I'm going to go with this. feel like an old Baptist preacher with this on. You guys probably think it's kind of funny. I'm up here with no tackle on my hands, no rods and reels, right? Looks kind of weird. We're going to talk a little different today about fishing and how we see bass fishing. If somebody, if I were to ask anybody in here a question, I'll just say, I'm just going to pick somebody. But first off, this is probably going to be the most unorthodox seminar or speech or whatever you want to call it you've ever sat through because if I don't take my medicine, I'm all over the place. I'm going to go ahead and tell you, watch the way I fish. I'll fish both ends of the lake at the same time with two different baits. I'm here for you. If you have a question, ask me. If it pertains to football, I've got it. If it's politics, I've got it. If it's fishing, I've got it. If I don't have it, I'll make it up. You'll never know if I'm lying to you. It's what fishermen do. I'm here for you. So this is going to be a little unorthodox, the whole deal. But when we think about bass fishing, we think about what is the most important thing. And I'll just start out with, I'll ask this young man right here. What do you think the most important thing a fisherman has, his best weapon in bass fishing? What makes KVD or Aaron or Ike or anybody else, what makes that guy good? Is it his tackle, if you can name one thing? Being versatile? The man on the boat over just said it all. It's confidence and it's brain. It doesn't matter what you buy or what you fish with. The most important thing you have as a fisherman, and we're learning it more and more as our career goes on, it's what between your ears it counts. It doesn't matter if it's East Coast or West Coast. If you can't control your emotions of the game and you can't play it at the highest level when things are going at its worst, you're going to get beat. I can have on 16-pound sunline, a Zoom finesse worm. I can have on the best stuff that I can get people to sponsor me with. But if I fish like an idiot, I'm going to weigh in like an idiot. If you act like an idiot, that's what you're going to catch. And, and I know what you're thinking. This guy's reaching. Now, I'm going, to brace you. I'm going to break it down really just how simple bass fishing is. Does anybody believe it's simple? I got a kiss method. I call it keep it simple, stupid. That's how I fish. You guys ever got out there in the morning had 71 rods on the front deck? Got a big tie-down strap over them. Looks like you're hauling a lawnmower to the jar, get big junk yard. You got stuff just laid up there everywhere. You told your buddy on your way out there, said, we're going to fish these fours. We're going to go right down here. We're going to fish this point. We're going to run over there. We're going to fish that spot. If they ain't bit by 9.05, we're going to run over here and fish that ledge. If they ain't biting on that ledge at 10.11, we're going to run out there and fish that old man's spring system. That's what we're going to do. You've got you a game plan before you got there, didn't you? Most of the time you beat before you get there, too, because you ain't listening not one thing that the fish won't. You believe the fish can tell you what they want? They can talk loud, but we can't hear good. Y'all know what I'm talking about? They'll be screaming at me sometimes and I can't hear them. Fish don't make a mistake. You ever been fishing down the bank and throw out in the middle of the pocket to get your backlash out and one choke it out there in the middle and you get it in, you look at your buddy and say, man, that was luck. Let's get back to flipping these jigs and these trees. <laughs> there you go. He screamed at you, you walked off. That fish don't make a mistake. Big deer, I'm a big deer hunter, I'm an avid bow hunter. People ask the key to killing big deer. Big deer don't make a mistake. They tell you what they want you to know and you gotta act off that, same way as a fish. A six pound fish don't make many mistakes. He don't go pulling under bobbers just by accident. He's simply doing, he's reacting to his environment. As fishermen, we don't react to our environment very well. Does anybody agree with that? Anybody think they force fishing in here? When they get there, you try, you try too hard? You ever had one of them days? Has anybody here besides me ever had a bad day? I mean a really bad day. Well, you want to stop and punch people on the way home at the gas station? <laughs> Buy a 40 ounce and run over people's mailbox that kind of day where you're just like, I'm going to break all my rods, throw them out in the lake, I'm done, I'm taking up golf. I have them a lot. I've been fishing 17 years, I made 14 classics, I won over $3 million. I know what it's like to have a bad day. Anybody can look good when they're winning. It's how you handle yourself when things are not going right is what separates the guys who catch them day to day and who don't. I've had them days when you start out backlash in the toilet paper. Y'all ever been there? Run the bathroom, just jerk it off, there, just backspin on you like, well, good Lord, look at this crap right here. And I mean, look at this crap right here. I, hey, this ain't gonna be my day. Anybody in here that type of guy? You looking for a reason when it ain't gonna be your day? You can tell the truth, this ain't an alcohol meeting. You just saying, hey, hey, you can raise your hand. I ain't gonna ask you to pray or nothing. But anybody in here feel like you look for a reason why it ain't your day? Nobody here has ever done that. Got to the lake and said, man, I ain't biting on this spot. We screwed. None of y'all's ever done that. Y'all lying. Every one of y'all's lying. 
I can go around the room and ask you, do you fishing with your team partner? He gets a big one on, jumps off. What do you do? Throw the rod down. That's it right there. We screwed. Ain't no way we're going to win. Huh? Is it starting to sound familiar? Put one of my Canelli fits, headbutt the windshield, kick the steering wheel, cuss out four or five dogs. None of y'all's done that? Then you ain't bass fishing. Bass fishing, to, to me, is the most misunderstood sport in the world, and I've met some pretty unique athletes in my time, and people say, man, it must be nice just to go out on the lake and just fish. <laughs> Put a half a million dollars on the end, you start reeling it in, let me break your line, and it ain't fishing no more. It's a fight. It's a cage fight. It's a mental battle that you go through every day to keep yourself together. So what I'm trying to do as I get older in my game, I'm learning more and more about how to control what's up here. It doesn't matter what I see on the depth finder. If I can't keep this up here working right, it ain't going to happen. And I can only tell you this, guys, from my mistakes. I'm not up here telling you something I read. I'm telling you the old school of hard knocks. I've lost a lot of money being hard-headed. I've won a lot of money being hard-headed. But I've learned over the last five or six years, overcoming adversity and thinking positive is the way to go in life. There's only three letters you need to remember today when I leave here in California, P-M-A. That's a positive mental attitude. A man who lives like that and fishes like that will beat you day in and day out. It doesn't matter if you're not on them, guys. It matters that you think you're going to catch them. How many people here when you go out fishing, you think you're going to catch them for the first 30 minutes? And boy, they don't come up schooling, and you ain't got that old buzz bait bite, you say, whew, gonna be a tough one today. Mm-hmm, sure is. You're gonna get skinned up, too, when you get to the weigh-in, because somebody on the other side of the creek is positive. He's the guy that's thinking, they didn't bite the buzz bait the first 30 minutes, must mean they're not real active on the surface, let's make a change. He's already two steps ahead of you. Fishing is not, when people ask me some of the keys about fishing, I say, you ever shot a shotgun at a moving target? And this is going to think, you're going to think, this redneck is really reaching. True fishermen fish where the fish are going, not where they're at or where you think they're at. When you practice on Thursday and I put the boat in the water on Friday morning, I have anticipated in my mind where I'm going to fish. A, a good idea. I've got three days to evaluate my situation. I know I'm going to start on this point. If they don't bite there in 10 minutes, I came there because I knew there was fish there. Within 10 minutes, I'm thinking, where did he go? Don't shoot behind the target. You, got, you, you fish your memories? A lot of you guys here fish your home waters, don't you? Got your seven or eight places that they always bite, don't they? And when they bite there for you, you do good, don't they? But the other times when they don't bite there, you get skinned up, don't they? Because you fish in memories, a lot like we do. When I go to Gunnersville this year in the Classic, one of the hardest things I'll have to do is not fish memories. Memories is tough now. You think a girlfriend will haunt you, get you a rock pile you caught two or three biggins on and try to run by in the bass boat. That triton won't turn. I don't care how hard, it's going over there. I, I said, don't go to that rock pile. I'm going to that rock pile. They're not even on rocks, you know. But that memory's so strong I can't fight it. What you got to do is learn to fish the pattern and the moment. Anybody in here get up to fish your memories? Y'all know y'all. Y'all want to slide your hand up going, yeah. I've been known to fish the boat ramp down there a bunch because I caught him there. My dad's the world's worst. You ride down the water with him, he'd be saying, I caught one in 1979 on the corner of that pier. You need to pull over. Well, daddy, that fish is dead and gone. <laughs> I, that's the only way you can look at it. I carry an etching sketch in my boat. Anybody know what an etching sketch is? Some of the younger generation, young man here, you might not know what an etching sketch was. When I was a kid, that's what we had, so it was an etching sketch. Uh-huh, you twist a little knob, whoop, 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 make a little line and get the boy shake it up and do it again. That's what we done. We played in the yard and in the highway. When I was your age, it was legal to play in the road. Because somebody hit you, it was a neighbor, they could go get them. It's a whole different generation. I keep an etching sketch in my boat. Anybody think you know why I would keep an etching sketch in my boat? Every day is a new day of my life. Every day. And on the days that I don't think that, I will physically take that etch and sketch out and lay down on the front of that triton, and I'll draw me some pictures through there, and I'll shake that etch and sketch up so my mind can see that we've started over, and I'll stick it right on the front of my boat. When I raise my front lid up on my triton in the classic, you'll see a small red etch and sketch, and you'll say, yep, he is a mental case. Right there he is. <laughs> he wasn't lying. Mentally, you have to start over. A two-day tournament, just because you don't catch him on day one doesn't mean that you've got to quit. And in my world, every day is a new day. 
Day one is just the beginning to day two. Day two is just a step closer to day three. If you trip on day one and you lay down, that's where you'll be when it's over. You have to remain positive up here. People ask me that. What, what makes people remain positive? I don't know. Some people's got it in them. Some people don't. You ever met anybody like that? No matter what the odds were, you couldn't get them down. I'm very close friends with Kevin Van Dam. I spent a lot of time with him. I spent a lot of time in the boat with him. I spent two years with a sports professional mind coach, which somebody says is a psychiatrist. I said it was a mind coach. First time he evaluated me, he said, I'm going to charge you a little extra because this is going to be a mess. <laughs> because the way my mind processed information when I was on the water sometimes was actually more of a hindrance than it was helping me. And him and I are sitting watching, and he don't know nothing about fishing. Nothing. This guy couldn't spell fish. He couldn't find one in SeaWorld. He simply worked on football players, baseball players, and I was his first client. And I said, I want to know what goes on up here. What triggers me to have a downhill spiral? And you guys have all been in a boat. You've been in the pinch of the game when things go wrong. And it's like a small aircraft starts to crash. You can pull up on the wheel, but you feel the nose going down, don't you? You run to your next spot, you break one off, then you break another rod, you run to your next spot, and some old dude's sitting on it in the John boat. By about three or four stops, you're ready to fight everybody on the lake. We call that driving it in the ground. If you can't seem to get you, you ever had those tournaments when your feet are nervous? You know what I'm talking about? You can't never sit still? Oh, good Lord. You swap, oh, I'm going to change this bait right here. I'm a versatile. I'm going to get this bait right here. No, you're confused. Big difference in versatile and confused. I hear people say, I'm a real versatile fisherman. I keep 30, 40 rods on my front deck. I said, how's the field tripping over them? Because you don't know what you're doing. You're confused. Versatile means you can fish your baits very effectively at any time and feel very comfortable with that with your confidence level. It doesn't mean you can strap 40 on the right side of the boat and scream down the lake. If you're digging through that pile of rods every time, you're slowing down on how you think and what you need to be doing. Fishing's presentation. It, that's all it is. You can have 14 different color worms and 14 different color weights. If you make the right presentation, he's going to bite it. That's why you see some of the best fishermen in the country fish the simplest. When you're in a boat, what do you think? Man, this really ain't that pretty after all. This is kind of like an old blind date. It's working, but it ain't real good to look at. I've been in a boat with Kevin. Kevin's been in a boat with me. We laugh about it. One thing I'll say about Kevin after talking with my mind coach, him and I sit down and we're watching the clip. My mind coach reports back. We have our second meeting. He said, I got a clip I want you to watch on a computer. It's Kevin Van Dam, the one of the last day tournaments at Wheeler. He's up against Jeremy Starks for one and two. Jeremy Starks said the fatal words, Van Dam who? That's what you don't say. That's like saying Mike Tyson might have bit you on the ear, but he won't bite me on the ear. Yes, he will. Just tell him. He will bite you. Maybe not today, but he will catch you. Well, they're out there fishing, and Kevin gets about a five-pounder on a crankbait. You know, Kevin's series five sexy shad, circus, whatever those things are he throws, you know. The fish jumps and comes off. Kevin never acknowledges the cameraman behind him or nothing. Bait comes in, <laughs> right back out. He's reeling it down there. The very next cast, he said, oh, I got one. About a four-pounder jumps and comes off. Kevin never turns to the camera. <laughs> throws it back out there and he starts reeling in. He turns, looked at the camera, kind of grins. He goes, that don't happen often, does it? It never meant a thing to him, nothing. It had zero variance in his life of what just happened. Now me, before I met my mind coach, let me tell you what would have happened. When he had jumped off, I would have drop kicked that cameraman, <laughs> slam across that mercury, and I'd have started breaking stuff. And I'd have said to myself, there it went right there. You can't win losing big fish like that. And then when the second one would come off, whoo, 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 911, son, I'm telling you right now, I would have melted down. Because the intensity that I played the game, at that point, I lost control of what I was doing. What Kevin showed me right then was no matter how bad the situation, it's all good. In his mind, he thought, if I got those two to bite, there must be a bunch of them here. Where would the rest of us have been? Down in the bottom of the boat. My wife's going to kill me. I've spent all the money for the weed eating right here, and I've lost it on them two casts. We've been there. I've done it, guys. I had to learn to overcome adversity. And then it started clicking. It doesn't matter what rod company or what reel company. I don't care what anybody says, the new rods, the new reels. Bait companies have stepped up to the next level. We can argue for hours over who makes the best swim bait or the best fluorocarbon. It's all good. You go in there and walk around, you can take anything in there and win the next Elite Series with. It's good stuff. 
it all comes down to what's up here now. When you look in the top 100 boats out there in the Elite Series, it's all the same stuff. Kevin left his boat in my garage after that. <laughs> <laughs>